Well, Happy New Year, everybody, for 2022. Who would have thought we'd still be having online services? A warm welcome to everybody who is watching. This is our joint online service for the 2nd of January for the Kakadi Town Centre churches. I wonder if you know what the church will celebrate on the 6th of January. The answer? Well, the answer is Epiphany. It's a good word, isn't it? Epiphany. Epiphany commemorates the visit of the Magi to Bethlehem. God incarnate revealed in Jesus Christ. It's an epiphany, a revelation, not just to the Jewish nation, but to the whole world. Here is a poem. It is simply entitled Epiphany by a man called Martin Geet. It might have been just someone else's story. Some chosen people get a special king. We leave them to their own peculiar glory, but we don't belong. It doesn't mean a thing. But when these three arrive, they bring us with them. Gentiles like us, their wisdom might be ours. A steady step that finds an inner rhythm, a pilgrim's eye that sees beyond the stars. They did not know his name, but still they sought him. They came from otherwise, but still they found. In temples they found those who sold and bought him. But in the filthy stable, hallowed ground, their courage gives our questioning hearts a voice to seek, to find, to worship, to rejoice. In arriving, they bring us with them, outsiders, we to arrive in Bethlehem. The Magi have not yet arrived. They are still travelling, on the move, following the star. Let's join them in their journey as we sing together, We Three Kings. Leading 
still proceed and guide us to thy perfect life. Thy perfect life. Thy perfect life. Thy perfect love. Traveling with the Magi, let us pray. Lord God, may we be like the Magi, who were guided to you by a star. Give us wisdom to seek you, the light to guide us to you, courage to search until we find you, graciousness to worship you, and generosity to lay our gifts before you. Very often our footsteps stumble, our hope is not strong. For the journey ahead, strengthen and forgive. We live in darkness even though the star shines brightly over Bethlehem. Our vision fails us for the way ahead, guide and forgive. We are so easily distracted, heading off to places where we are not called to go our perseverance wanes in the year that lies ahead in courage and forgive. Open our eyes to see God's revelation in Jesus Christ. Open our hearts to know Christ's presence in our lives. And may God's Spirit be to us this day the epiphany of cradle and cross as God draws dangerously close to humanity. Cry of child and word of man. Reveal yourself to us and help us to listen. Amen. We're all in a journey. The university of life. Each step a step into the unknown. We don't know what lies ahead. We don't know what's around the corner. It's a way we cannot yet see. To each step let us bring hope and seek faith that comes only from God. Let us now sing together one more step along the world I go.
We've been called by God to journey like the Magi. The star is Jesus Christ, light of the world, guiding us to where God wants us to be. And wherever we wander, in the faces of those we meet, let us see the face of Jesus Christ. Before we hear our Old Testament reading, let us listen to the song, Jesus, you have called us. Jesus, you have called us. Come, follow me. Take up your cross, deny yourself.
Psalm 147. We read from verse 12 to verse 20. This is the Good News translation. The psalmist said, Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. He keeps your gates strong. He blesses your people. He keeps your borders safe and satisfies you with the finest wheat. He gives a command to the earth. And what he says is quickly done. He spreads snow like a blanket and scatters frost like dust. He sends hail like gravel. No one can endure the cold he sends. Then he gives a command and the ice melts. He sends the wind and the waters flow. He gives his message to his people, his instructions and laws to Israel. He has not done this for other nations. They do not know his laws. Praise the Lord. In our journey, God accompanies us. Now we know that, but it's hard because we cannot see God. He's like the wind, only visible when it blows hard enough. The trees sway, leaves fall. God is there. Spirit of God, unseen as the wind. Spirit of God, unseen as the wind, gentle as is the dove, touch us with love and teach us to see joy to you, Lord. Well, there's another way to see God, and that is God revealed in Jesus Christ. We're back to Epiphany. God is revealed. Incarnation. God who pitches his tent right in the midst of humanity. And Emmanuel, God with us. Let us hear a reading from John's Gospel. Chapter 1, verses 10 to 18, and I'm going to read from the message translation. It says this, the light, life, was the real thing. Every person entering life he brings into light. He was in the world, the world was there through him, and yet the world didn't even notice. He came to his own people, but they didn't want him. But whoever did want him, who believed he was who he claimed and would do what he said, he made to be their true selves, their child of God's selves. These are the God begotten, not blood begotten, not flesh begotten, not sex begotten. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighbourhood 
we saw the glory with our own eyes. The one of a kind glory, like father, like son. Generous inside and out, true from start to finish. John pointed him out and called. There's the one. The one I told you was coming. The one that was coming after me, but in fact was ahead of me. He's always been ahead of me. Has always had the first word. We all live off his generous abundance. Gift after gift after gift. We've got the basics from Moses. And then this exuberant giving and receiving. This endless knowing and understanding. All this came through Jesus. The Messiah. Now no one has ever seen God. Not so much as a glimpse. This one of a kind God expression who exists at the very heart of the Father, has made him as plain as day. Amen. I've often talked about the miracle of the ordinary, and I suppose if we are watchful enough, God will reveal himself to us in very ordinary ways. When Paul wrote to the church at Rome, he said, If you have seen creation, you have seen God, the epiphany of God, revealed in the world all around us. The sun is going down, and here I am walking along the side of Wraith Lake, so I need to be careful in case I fall in. It's nearly a new year. I'm recording this the week before our service on the 2nd of January. I'm kind of fascinated by the god Janus. Now, Janus is where we get the word January from. And Janus was an interesting creature. He had two heads, one facing one way and one facing the other. And he was the god of lots of different things. He was a very busy Roman god. He was the god of beginnings, gates, transitions. I'm reading my list here, time. Duality, doorways, passages, frames and endings, as I said, a rather busy God. So he's got two heads, one in which he can look back and he can look back and reflect. And the other one is a head that looks forward to anticipate what is to come. So what a perfect analogy to use at this time when we reflect on another new year. If you think at all rationally, January the 1st is just like, well, any other day of the year. Yet it's become both a time when we reflect, when we look back, and we anticipate as we look forward. It's a bit like playing a round of golf. At least it's been my experience. The first nine, well, it hasn't gone particularly well. You haven't played as you would have liked. But see, when you stand on the 10th tee, it's just where the psychology comes in. You stand on the 10th tee and you think, this is where it starts to get better. This is when I start to play better. Or not, as the case may be. There's a lot of psychology here going on on the 1st of January as we look back and as we look forward. New Year. We look back and we reflect on all that has happened in 2021, for good or for bad. What a year it's been. Covid certainly hasn't gone away. But we also look forward and anticipate to what is to come in 2022. We make our plans, we dream our dreams, we anticipate, we aspire to all the new things that we're going to do. And yet we simply don't know what's actually going to happen. We don't know what lies ahead. All we can do is look forward with hope. And that is what we bring to the journey. And we ask God for faith in the things that we cannot yet see. In the future, our hope and our faith in God, they come together. There is no doubt that things will trip us up. And I've got to watch here where I'm going, just in case I trip up and end up in Wraith Lake. And look around here and see God in creation. That's what Paul was talking about in the book of Romans. But I'm also so aware of just how life 
can surprise us and also shatter us. In our journey into 2022, our hope will embrace the events of life and our faith in God will see us through, even when it seems like our world is falling apart. Well, I'm going to leave you now. Andy got on with my journey around Wraith Lake. One more step along the world I go. But remember, we never travel alone. God is always with us and we journey in the company with others. A blessing on all the times our paths will cross. Epiphany can be summed up in these words. Love came down at Christmas. Now it's a well-known hymn that started life as a poem by Christina Rossetti. Now if you've been following the Church of Scotland online advent calendar, you would have heard a new version of this carol. Written by Robin Hill, minister of Gladsmuir linked with Long Nidri. And here it is sung by the Heart and Soul Swing Band. Listen out for the double bass. Love came down at Christmas Love all lovely, love divine Love was born at Christmas Star and angels gave the sign Star and angels gave the sign Worship me, the Godhead Love incarnate, love divine Worship we our Jesus, but where with for sacred sign, but where with for sacred sign. Love shall be our token. Love be yours and love be mine Love to God and all the earth Love for me and gift and sign Love the universal sign wondering the photographs were of a place called Senja which is a Norwegian island deep within the Arctic Circle and taken by Alistair Swan. We bring now our prayers of intercession to God. I've taken these from the Church of Scotland website and they were written by the Reverend Jockstein. Let us pray. Gracious God at the start of a new year we bring to you our hopes for the world and for its peoples. Grant us peace in place of strife, a desire for justice instead of a dash for growth, the building up of forests, not their pulling down, the cleansing, not the pollution of our seas, and in place of hatred, goodwill. We pray for the Queen, and for all the parliaments and councils of these islands in which we live. Grant them wisdom and courage for this year ahead, integrity of life, strength in every good resolution. And for all who lead in church and state, grant humble hearts and minds to listen to you and others to distinguish the good from the bad the wise from the foolish, the fruitful from the empty. Lord God, this year 
will bring its share of illness and bereavement and family conflict. We pray now for those who already face these trials. May they know your healing and hope and the good news of Jesus Christ, who is Lord of this life and the life to come. Our brother, who is human like us, yet picked up our frail bodies and took us with him into life eternal. May his spirit bear witness to these things, to what you are doing in their lives and ours. Lord God, this year, many words will be spoken in public in our land. We take a minute to reflect quietly on what lies ahead for each one of us and to ask your help and your blessing. Lord God, one day we will see all things gathered up in Jesus Christ. May we live now and always in his light and in his love. Our final song has become a favourite of mine. A mighty fortress is our God. So please, go in peace. With the blessing of God, God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, may their blessing dwell upon you and all whom you love, from this day and forevermore. Amen. And all the best for 2022.